Good afternoon. Um, welcome everybody to um, the program, the Farmers Markets in Colorado webinar. Um, th this is Wendy Peters Muscay okay, at Livewell, Colorado, and I'm here to welcome you to this webinar. Um, I'm going to be joined today by several other presenters as well to walk through various programs that are available for you and your partners to implement at Farmers Market. Um, so obviously I will be thinking about a few programs. I'm Wendy, Director of Food Systems here at Livewell. Um, we actually will not be joined today by Martha Sullen. Um, I will be doing my best job to work through slides for Martha Sullen, who um, is an ag business and food specialist staff with Colorado State University Extension and is on the board of the Colorado Farmers Market Association. Martha is very ill, so I'm stepping in last minute to fumble my way through her slides. We will also be joined by Lauren Bell, who is um, a fraud data and policy specialist in the EBT, so the Electronic Benefit Transfer, EBT unit at the Colorado Department of Human Services. There she works as a farmer's market liaison to help get farmer's markets and direct marketing farmers free or low cost point of sale equipment. We will also be joined by Zora Cobb, who is a program specialist at the USDA Nutrition Service. She's a farmer's market coordinator for the Mountain Plains region, and she can assist with any questions markets have the process to become SNAP authorized and also about receiving free BT equipment. Lastly, we will also be joined by Amy Nelms, the Food Access Coordinator here at Livewell, Colorado, and many of you know her um, as the statewide coordinator for the program Double Up Food Box. So our agenda today um, is to welcome you to this. I'm going to walk through the agenda really quickly, and then we'll dive right into some specific programs. Um, first, we want to start with a little bit of context setting. So here's where I will present some of Martha's slides from the Colorado Farmers Market Association perspective about why is this really sort of an important and pressing issue today and sort of you know why are we here talking about connecting various food assistance programs to farmers markets and direct market farming and some of the context we see here in Colorado. Then I will talk specifically about um, WIC, so the um, Women, Infants, and Children's Program for Farmers in Colorado and then Zora and then Lauren will both talk more in depth around SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, formerly Food Stamps, at farmers markets, and then Amy will talk about Double Up Food Bucks, um, Colorado. We will close with a few frequently asked questions about kind of where you go with specific questions to troubleshoot specific issues. Have some time for your questions and hopefully our answers, um, and announce a couple of additional webinars we want to host in this series. Um, so diving right in, so some of the context setting and why we're talking about this issue here in Colorado today. Um, so here's, this is, the point here is just to really talk about um, not just farmers markets, but really all farmers market farming operations, but is that farmers markets sort of by the na nature of what they are, are very community-based and place-based institutions um, and sort of in inherently connect with their community in multiple ways. And offering programs like SNAP or formerly food stamps is just one more way to bridge farmers markets to even more consumers in their community and to make more of those community connections. So just a little bit of context about consumer groups really can benefit from farmers markets and sort of building that logic um, is that specifically looking nationally, you know, we think a lot, I think when we hear about, I grew up this way anyway, when we hear about things like hunger or food insecurity, we tend to sort of think globally, right? So I grew up in the 80s. And when you talk about hunger, you sort of immediately picture that child in Ethiopia, right? And that we're all sort of rallying around. And, and oftentimes, thinking about food insecurity and hunger, we don't often think about it sort of in our own backyard and with our neighbors, within ourselves even. So just a little bit of context, though, is that, you know, there are about 13% of Americans who struggle with food insecurity um, at some point throughout the year. Um, and food insecurity is defined as a state of being without reliable access to a sufficient quantity of affordable, nutritious food. Um, some other points just to make as well, that food insecurity tends to be even more prevalent amongst children and affect children in even more severe ways. Um, and in households with children, where children and adults both are food insecure, about 8% of our households in the United States, in the last time we collected this data. I should have also mentioned, I'm sorry to go back, I skipped a logistics 
point and apologize. We are recording this webinar, so we'll be sharing the link widely with you and all of your partners afterwards. And also, as we go, um, please use the chat function. You actually can't speak. Uh, you're not allowed to speak on this Zoom session, um, but you can chat in your questions. So as you, please feel free to put questions as you come up with them into the chat box, and we will track them and address them at the end of the webinar. Um, talking specifically at some food insecurity in Colorado, um, about 13% of households uh, are thought to be food insecure in Colorado. And in the counties with the highest food insecurity rates, as you see here, tend to be more rural, for sure. Um, there are also counties, though, that have significant agricultural production, and several of these counties have very robust farmers markets, for example. Um, so it sort of increases maybe the, the importance of points of access like farmers markets for fresh food in these communities. So why is this access important? Um, I think we are, most people are fairly well aware that eating more fruits and vegetables is generally a good idea. Um, I was actually at the Colorado Fruit and Vegetable Growers Association conference this year, and a man presented sort of this meta-analysis of, I think, around 150 or so different studies that looked at the health benefits of increasing fruit and vegetable intake. And the outcome was just astounding, right, is that pretty much all of your health outcomes tend to get better and improve when you increase your fruit and vegetable intake. We also know, however, that we don't tend to consume very many fruits and vegetables. It's well over 80% of Coloradans, Colorado adults, don't consume the recommended number of fruits and vegetables. So it's, it's hard for all of us, and then this is exacerbated in low-income communities. So as you can see here, low-income Americans consume just over half of the recommended number of fruits and vegetables, where so middle and upper income Americans consume a little bit over 60% of what's recommended for fruit and vegetable intake. So here's a graph that shows that, this sort of stark difference across economics, sort of comparing lower income to higher income Americans and fruit and vegetable consumption. The other thing we know though, again, raising the importance of why we're talking about um, SNAP specifically today, is that there are many, an increasing number of studies that show that shopping specifically at farmers markets and other sort of direct market operations can increase fruit and vegetable consumption, and specifically among um, SNAP shoppers or SNAP participants. Um, SNAP participants have also reported um, that produce at farmers markets is of higher quality than supermarkets and made us be more desirable, easier to eat, more enticing, things like that. So focusing specifically on farmers markets in Colorado um, and actually increasing their importance as well in community as points of access, as I think this chart speaks for itself, um, is that peak in 2012, but still sort of the general trend over the past 10 plus years has really been a growth in farmers markets. And that farmers markets, as you know, can look a lot of different ways. They can be big and small, they can move around, um, but the general trend is that these are becoming you know, increasingly popular in all sorts of communities. So here's a map that shows farmers markets in Colorado this year. Clearly a concentration in metropolitan areas along the front range, but a really nice spread across the state as well. And as many of you probably know, a lot of these, these Farmers markets in very rural communities may be very vibrant centers of their communities. There may be only one or two in the corner of the state, but they're very key and central to that community. So just a note too about farmers markets and sort of the populations that they're serving and reaching as well, is that a little bit over nationally, a little bit over a half of um, market directly, so direct market farming operations, are actually located in metropolitan counties. So we sort of increasingly see the connection, a real direct connection too, between where people are growing their food and selling it into population centers. And as the second bullet says, over 80% of farms selling food directly, you know, are doing so within 100 miles of their farm. So again, a really tight community connection. So a little bit about Colorado Farmers Market Association, and I apologize, I'm not directly involved with CFMA, do not sit on their board, um, but you can please go to coloradofarmers.org to find out more information about CFMA. If you're not a member, feel free to become a member. Um, and since 2007, CFMA has been supporting EBT, so electronic benefit transfer, the equipment needs to swipe a SNAP card, right? They've been supporting this in farmers markets across the state. We've been providing a variety of technical assistance, um, providing information around the equipment, technical assistance about um, implementing SNAP, 
They provide SNAP vouchers to participating farmers markets. And now work really closely with us at Livewell Colorado to provide technical assistance around implementing the Double Up Food Bucks initiative. And um, we did have one question come in. I just want to clarify again. I apologize. I didn't say it at first. We will be recording this webinar and sharing the link out very soon this week. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit now. So the first specific program that we want to talk about is a special supplemental nutrition assistance program for women, infants, and children. Um, was known as the WIC program, which has been around for several decades um, for eligible women uh, prenatally and postnatally with young children. So a couple things around WIC for farmers. We get a lot of questions um, about really what, what kind of programs are available in the state of Colorado for WIC. Um, I also should say I do not administer the WIC program. Um, that, the WIC program is overseen by the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment and then administered directly at the county level through local public health agencies. So I am also representing um, public health today on this webinar to provide some updates around the WIC program. So one question we get a lot is around um, federal WIC programs for farmers markets. So there are two that you may have heard of, the WIC Farmers Market Nutrition Program and the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program, which provides special fruit and vegetable vouchers to use only to direct market farming operation. So this is all to say we actually do not have these programs in Colorado, and I do not foresee we, that we would have these programs in the Colorado anytime in the near future as well. But we do get asked about this a lot. Why don't we have FMSD? Um, we have never had the WIC Farmers Market Nutrition Program. We have um, made some attempts with the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program, um, administered through the Colorado Department of Human Services, and for a variety of reasons, very high overhead and admin costs. They just haven't really been cost effective or have the reach that we would like to see. For the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program, the Department of Human Services had a lovely response and actually wrote an internal policy to then um, to really encourage and promote local pro pro procurement, so geographic preference for older adult meal programs, and also to encourage things like gardening on site where they have older adult meal programs. So that was their response. And then at the WIC level, there's been other responses that this, both the state and counties have made. So at the county level, this is all to say, even though we don't have the WIC FMNP program, there are a lot of creative things that local um, agencies can do on their own. So just a couple of examples of what counties have done on their own to facilitate connections for WIC to farmers markets. One is in, um, with, in Boulder, so a partnership that I did not know this, this is incredible, it's 23 years old. So a partnership between Boulder County Public Health and the Boulder County Farmers Market. So they have come together year after year through a program funded directly by the farmers markets, BCFM, the Farmers Market Association itself, um, that provides WIC recipients with a $20 WIC market buck. So it's a packet of market bucks, $20, that can be spent on any WIC eligible item, fruits, vegetables, milk, meat, bread, et cetera. So somewhat similarly, um, Broomfield, starting in 2013, the Broomfield Farmers Market started working with Broomfield Health, 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 excuse me, Health and Human Services to build a program specifically for WIC recipients as well. And they started off in 2013 with a $10 monthly voucher Again, this was funded through their farmer's market just for fresh fruits and vegetables. And it has grown over time pretty con con significantly. And then in 2015, it sort of expanded to twice monthly vouchers for $10 for fresh fruits and vegetables. And then just this last season, they increased that to weekly $10 fruit and vegetable vouchers. And they redeemed 456 of these vouchers just last season alone. Um, and sort of at their peak one day alone, they saw 35 vouchers were gained from different way of clientele, which is a pretty significant reach. Um, and then at the state level, again, since we don't have the Federal Farmers Market Nutrition Program, what the state department has done is to start a program called Farm to Family, where they authorize farms, not farmers markets yet, but individual farms or farmers to accept WIC fruit and vegetable vouchers. Um, and that is currently in operation in the state. One big piece of background information here is that WIC is currently moving to an EBT system, so the electronic benefit transfer. So we are now rolling out in the state of Colorado what's called eWIC. So it will run in the same way as SNAP is, using an EBT machine. Um, this is fairly new. It's new everywhere in the country. It's definitely new to Colorado. 
So the state is still working on creating a device that works for farmers, sort of the eWIC device that actually works for farmers, and they're just not ready with it yet. So it's not quite rolled out for this summer. Farmers and farms still are able to work with WIC if they have like an ethernet or a landline connection, but the wireless device is not available yet. Um, I did provide contact information here though. Cheryl Castle is the one at, with, with the Colorado WIC program that would, you would want to ask her questions about getting the WIC authorization to accept the fruit and vegetable vouchers. Also something a bit worth waiting for though um, is that the SNAP program will be vendor. So eventually after this summer, both WIC and SNAP will be working with the same vendor. So what we're moving towards hopefully is that there's one device, one EBT device that can accept both WIC and SNAP. It just won't happen this summer, um, but it's something to be paying attention for, to looking out for technical assistance around uh, before hopefully summer 2018. So with that, I'm going to pass it off to our next speaker, Zora Cobb, to talk about SNAP at Farmers Market. So the SNAP program can for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Um, up until about 2008, you probably would have known it as um, the Food Stamp Program, but we changed our name. Um, I'm going to specifically cover the Farmers Market Program. Um, <laughs> sorry, some technical issues. Um, I think the First thing I really want to cover, though, is just an overview of all of the organizations involved, because um, when you're looking at accepting SNAP at a farmer's market, there's a lot of entities um, involved in the process of actually setting that up. Um, the first is the Food and Nutrition Service, and that's where I work. Um, the Mountain Plains Regional Office is my office, and I'm a good person to come to if you have just a question about the process. Um, but once you actually decide you want to submit an application to accept SNAP, that's when you're going to start actually interacting with our retailer operations division. Um, and they are the ones who will actually process your application to become a retailer. Um, and I do think it's really important to note that even though we all work in SNAP, um, if you come to one of us with a question that the, a different organization handles, all we can do is refer you over. And I think that can be a big point of confusion because we might be able to answer a general question, but when you're coming down to a specific issue, it's really important that you're reaching out to the right entity. Um, once you actually submit an application, that's when you can either work with Farmers Market Coalition or the Colorado Department of Human Services to actually um, apply to receive your free EBT equipment. Um, right now, the Farmers Market Coalition is waitlisting all of their um, equipment grants. Hopefully that will be changed in the future. Um, but Colorado Department of Human Services also provides um, free equipment that markets and farmers can use. Um, once you actually decide to take that step, you'll have to work with a third party processor and that's who you actually buy your, or obtain your equipment from. Um, FMC and CDHS are both basically um, providing funding, but the third party processor is who actually um, holds your equipment. Um, when you work with a third party processor, that's who's going to process your payment and push it through the state CBT system. And so that's the other important thing to keep in mind is once you receive your equipment, once you're authorized to become um, a snapper, you're going to have to link up your third party processor with the Colorado Department of Human Services because they're actually the state EB, they actually are in the state EBT system, so you'll have to contact both entities and get that set up. Um, your third party processor, though, is the one who has your service fees. Um, they're the ones who you actually submit your payments to. If you would then like to participate in a double buck program, that's when the Poe Colorado becomes involved. I would also um, add that CFMA um, also provides um, funding to help with um, SNAP coupons. Um, but even if you have coupons, you'll still have to have CBT equipment to 
still process that payment. Um, Livo Colorado is the organization that actually handles the double box payments. Um, and so they, they can help with that part of the system, but when it comes to actually becoming stamp authorized or obtaining EDP equipment, once again, you're gonna have to make sure you're contacting the right organization. Um, and I, I think a lot of times people wonder, like, how did we get here? Why, why are you giving away free equipment? Why is there all of this double book program? Um, and I just kind of want to go over kind of what brought us to this place. It started in 2012 with the Consolidated Further Continuing Appropriations Act of 2012. Um, and that act provided $4 million per year to provide um, farmers markets with wireless EBT equipment. When the program first started, we um, funding directly, and this is FNS provided the funding um, directly to the state. Um, but going forward, we've actually worked with a contractor and that's how um, FNC is able to get their funding to provide free wireless EBT equipment to farmers and farmers markets. Um, in 2014, the Farm Bill added um, a total of 90 million years for oh, 90 million over five years to fund incentive strategies to help SNAP customers um, better afford fruits and vegetables. And this is really um, what's funding. I think what most people hear is the Finney grant. Um, those were that funding was authorized in the 2014 bill. Um, and so th that's kind of why we we suddenly have all of this additional funding to give to farmers markets actually. Um, now. Once you decide that you actually want to participate in the SNAP program as a farmer's market or a direct marketing farmer, um, which you probably consider to be a farm stand, I will add that it's important that you're actually meeting those FNS definitions. Um, it happens a lot that people call those a farmer's market, um, but it doesn't meet what FNS considers to be a farmer's market, which of two or more producers that sell their own agricultural products directly to the general public at a fixed location. Um, and that fixed location component is very important. If you have a mobile market, um, you will not be considered to be a farmer's market um, in FNS's eyes. Um, if you're a direct marketing farmer, you're an individual producer that sells their own agricultural products directly to the general public. Um, direct marketing farmers are actually able to move from location to location. Um, and what's important about meeting these two definitions is these are the only two entities that um, FNS or um, FNC through their grant program is able to actually provide free equipment to. If you are not one of these entities, they would encourage you to look for other sources of equipment funding because it is um, a requirement that it really only goes to farmers markets or direct marketing farmers. Um, community supported agriculture is um, it's a structure that we get a lot of questions about and the real answer is that pretty much any type of retailer can be a CFA. Most often it's a direct marketing farmer but if you are um, a food hub or something similar you can still be a CSA that does not necessarily mean that you're going to meet the definition of farmers market or direct marketing farmer. To start the application process to become a SNAP authorized retailer because that is really um, the first step in all of this, you need to set up a USDA e-authentication account um, and this is what's going to allow you to actually log in and submit additional documents, um, continue with your application if you didn't finish it before submitting, or even just check on the status without having to call an actual person. Um, you can fill out an application online, obviously, with your e-authentication account. You also have the option to ask for a paper application. It will be mailed to you, and it's very slow. You will have to mail back and all of your documentation. So I would really encourage you to just go with the online application. Um, it's always faster. Um, once you fill out the application, there's a farmer's market application, which is only for farmer's markets. If you are a farm stand or direct marketing farmer or any kind of other agricultural entity, um, you're gonna need to fill out just the basic store 
your application. Um, so some of the questions on that application don't necessarily line up with all of the answers to how your business operates, but really it's important to note that the application is the best guess. After you submit it, that's when you'll um, have someone from the retailer operations division actually come and ask you any follow-up questions about things that didn't make sense on your application or any kind of additional information that they need. Um, you also will have to submit required documents. The two that almost everyone has to submit um, is a driver's license and a social security card. The only time you don't submit a social security card is if you're a nonprofit and that's when you need to provide um, your 501c3 documentation. You will also have to print out and sign a signature page where everything you submit on the application is true to the best of your ability. Once you submit that documentation, it starts um, the FNS time clock for 45 days. That's how long we have to actually approve your application. Um, but keep in mind that that 45 days starts from when you actually get all of your documents in, not from the first time that you open up the application and type in one word. If you ever have questions about um, the status of your application, you should you can obviously check online, but you should also call the retailer service center and the phone number for this for that is at the, the end of all of the slides of the webinar. Um, I will say if you call me, I really, really, really cannot help you um, with any questions about the status of your application. Once you start that document, it's the point at which you are in the hands of our retailer operations division. They are the only ones who can answer any questions about your specific application. Um, I can answer general questions or before you fill out anything, you can answer those, but once you actually press that submit button, you are fully on the retailer operations division. Um, they were the ones who answer all your questions. Thank you, Zora. Um, this is Wendy again. And just a quick note as well, and we follow up and we send out the link to the webinar, we will send out that whole list too of required documentation as well. So you have that all in one place. So Lauren, I'm gonna pass it over to Lauren Bell at the Colorado Department of Human Services. Okay, perfect. Um, so as Zora mentioned previously, in order to begin the process to start accepting SNAP at your market, you must apply for FNS authorization. Um, once you are authorized by FNS to accept SNAP at your market, you will receive an FNS authorization number. Um, let's see here. And then um, once you receive that notification of your FNS authorization number, please notify the CDHS EBT office, which is me, um, by emailing me directly with your FNS number name of your market, and a good contact phone number to reach you directly. Um, once FNS authorizes your market, they also notify our EBT vendor, which is currently JP Morgan, of your FNS author authorization and number. Um, and then just for your information, JP Morgan will mail the market an informational packet on wired devices within 24 hours of authorization. This is currently only being sent for wired devices, whether or not you indicated you needed a wired device or a wireless device. Okay. And then um, there is funding for point of sale machines that are either are low cost or free. In order for CDHS to determine funding streams or eligibility for funding, the market does need to be authorized through FNS prior to looking at the funding options. Um, since the funding is um, government funding, we never know when um, each stream of funding is going to end. So it definitely matters um, by the time you're FNS certified um, that we look at all those options. Um, and then once the market is authorized through FNS, the market declares um, what device they require, we will make a determination of which funding source to use. Um, and then for federal funding, um, CDHS will monitor sources of federal funding and refer those markets to apply for free equipment through that source prior to paying for the POS machine um, through C CDHS funding. Um, however, there will be instances where there is currently no federal funding 
for the free P, uh, POS equipment. Um, in these cases, CDHS will pay for those POS machines as well as the communication fees for 12 months. CDHS will not cover the, the transaction fees of the POS device for um, credit or debit card. Um, the market does need to pay for these fees out of their pocket. Okay, and then as Wendy mentioned before, um, we are currently converting to a new EBT vendor. Right now, the date of conversion is in July 2017. Um, and as it gets closer to conversion and as we have more information to release, we will communicate that information to the market. And there are two different options for POS devices, either a wired or wireless device. When, um, when there is federal funding available for free POS equipment, we will refer the markets um, who need wireless devices to the federal funding. Any market that needs a wired device will um, be funded through CDHS. Also, some replacement devices will need to be funded through the state based on federal funding in the past in regards to replacement devices. If your device is broken, please reach out to your third party processor to determine if the machine is still under warranty. If it is not under warranty and cannot be fixed, um, CDHS will look into replacing it. And um, if you do have settlement questions or need manual vouchers, um, you will need to contact your third party processor. JP Morgan cannot see your settlement information as this is run directly through your third party processor. Please note that if there are, um, if you are not able to obtain that necessary information from your third party processor, please contact me um, and I can reach out to JP Morgan to have them um, reach out to your third party processor for troubleshooting and things like that. Great. Thanks, Laura. Thank you for your patience. There's a little bit of delay when we toggle back and forth here. Um, so just a reminder too, please feel free to type in questions into the chat box as we go and we'll address them at the end. Um, or you can chat, you can type them in at the end as well. So now we're gonna hear from Amy Nelms here at Louisville, Colorado about Double Up Food Box. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. So I'm the statewide coordinator for Double Up Food Box. There we go. So Double of Colorado, I call it a tack onto SNAP, or it's kind of like a hat SNAP can wear at your farmer's market. So when people bring their EBT card, they receive, oh, there we go, sorry, my animations got a little messed up. So they receive vouchers that are good for Colorado grown fresh fruits and vegetables. So the goal is that people can walk away with more fresh produce from a farmer's market. Double Up Food Box offers a $1 to $1 match up to $20 every time somebody visits a farmer's market. Um, this is a photo of what someone can buy for $20 in SNAP benefits alone at a farmer's market. And here's a photo of what someone can buy with SNAP plus Double Up, which totals a $40 value. Double Up Food Box is meant to be a win-win-win. So through this incentive program, families bring home more healthy food, Farmers make more money and more dollars are staying in our local economy, which strengthens community. In Colorado this year, we've got eight counties, and then nationally there are 16 states administering the Double Up Food Bucks program. So how do you sign up? So all of this talk about SNAP authorization, that's the first step. So you have to get SNAP authorized in order to be eligible for the Double Up Food Bucks program. The next step is to email me, Amy Nelms, at livablecolorado.org um, to get put on our year, and I put year two, it should be year three list. Um, right now we are full for summer of 2017, so we can put people as a priority for 2018. And then we're gonna release our applications in January 2018. Those are the three. Um, and so once you have staff at your market, this is a great way to get people to buy fresh produce, to support local farmers, and to keep your um, market affordable for all customers, even if they're on supplemental nutri or supplemental food assistance. The benefits to joining, so your community will have access to more healthy food, 
your farmers can make more money. So both SNAP and Double Up are basically cash to your farmers. So it's good there. And then you're connected to CDHS and other agencies that promote Double Up Food Bucks markets. And then you join a network of committed markets, CSAs, and retailers that all want fresh produce to be a choice for all. So you become part of a collaborative network and we take time to send ideas back and forth about cooking classes, activities people do, um, liberal technical support for accessible markets. And so you get to join a state that's very committed to that. All right, and I'll pass it back to Wendy. Great, thanks Amy. So we wanted to provide um, a little bit of a summary of some of the information that we just provided you here um, and some troubleshooting a little bit because I know this was also still a lot of information and um, you can go back and watch this webinar as many times as you want, which I'm sure is what you all want to do, but we do want to summarize some, some frequently asked questions here as well. So some things that may come up, again, this is reiterating some of the things that we just said. But say you're confused about where to start, right? What do you need to apply? How do you fill out the SNAP authorization application? That is, there is the Retail Service Center. Um, so there is sort of a, a generic number for the nation that we have provided here. And again, this services, I think, all types of retailers. So again, they may not have specific farmer's market expertise, but they should be able to address all technical questions. Or you can contact um, DoorCop directly. <laughs> Um, and then say after that, so you want to start applying for the free equipment. So as Lauren talked about in the Colorado Department of Human Services, at this point in time, until we know anything differently about Farmers Market Coalition and any additional federal funding through Farmers Market Coalition for that free equipment at this point in time, we're really sending people straight to Lauren at the Colorado Department of Human Services about the free equipment and to start that process. And then, so you're wondering, did you get approved? Are you SNAP authorized? What's your status? That, at that point, you call the retail service center directly with, um, and or did you when you call that, is there a specific number that you need to provide? Yes, you need to have your FNS number. Okay. So you should have an FNS number already assigned to you uh, before you're even approved. So we just call your FNS number to check on the status of your application. If you're a, someone who has already applied to the Farmers Market Coalition, the FMC, for that national program for free, the free equipment, um, and you have questions about that application or your equipment was sent to the wrong address, this has been known to happen, please contact Farmers Market Coalition directly at ebt at farmersmarketcoalition.org. Again, just to reiterate for Double Up Food Box, so once all of that is in place, right, so you are SNAP authorized and ready to go, and you'd like to um, participate in the Double Up Food Bucks program in 2018, um, that's when you would email Amy directly to find out about getting involved with that program. And again, if you have questions about the WIC program specifically, um, as a farmer farmer, please contact Cheryl Castle, who works um, with WIC retailers at the State Department of Public Health and Environment. And then you can also contact me, this is Wendy, if you I just wanted to flag that throughout, I mean, a lot of these issues, I think it's probably fairly apparent at this point that double up food box program, money for the free equipment, um, how you define a direct market farming operation, so many layers of this are determined through federal policy, right? So primarily, typically through the farm bill, but not always. Um, you know, do we even have funding for the WIC Farmers Market Nutrition Program nationally and other things like that? A lot of this is federal farm policy work. Um, it is something that Liberal Colorado will continue to work on. We are already ramping up um, some advocacy work around the Farm Bill, the 2018 Farm Bill. We are about to release our Farm Bill platform. We work with national partners as well as state and local partners all the time um, about sort of advocacy work at the federal level. So if that's something that interests you and you want to get more involved with um, and you have more questions, feel free to email me as well. Um, I love talking about these issues. So those are our frequently asked questions. Um, and before we go into our upcoming webinars, I want to address questions that you have. So again, um, there's a Q&A box and a chat box. They're both. We're monitoring both, feel free to type in a question in either. Um, so one question that we have is, um, so someone asked that my understanding is that people can only use Double Up Food Bucks for fruits and vegetables. Your picture showed eggs also. 
<laughs> yeah, so yeah, let's question. So yeah, um, you can use snap card for all farmers market foods. The benefit is only for fruits and veggies, and that is accurate. You're paying very close attention. Thank you very much. So what this is clarifying is that when you use your snap benefit at any 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 retailer, farmers market, grocery store, convenience store, anywhere. You can use your SNAP benefits for any SNAP eligible food items, right? So you cannot use it for hot and prepared food items, but pretty much the vast majority of the rest of food items you can use your SNAP benefits for. For double up food bucks, so that one, that extra dollar per dollar spent in SNAP, um, the, the double up food bucks incentive itself can only be spent on fresh, Colorado grown fruits and vegetables. So that is accurate. I'm checking for additional questions, and please type them in as I check for other questions. So while um, we have a couple more minutes, so please feel free to type in any additional questions you have. Um, in the meantime, just to let you know, we are sort of considering this, this webinar here as sort of part one of a series. And this was sort of that 101 overview of all of the different food assistance programs that might be available uh, for farmers markets, CSAs, farm stands, etc. So we will also be planning two additional webinars. One that will look specifically at sort of what we call community support programs. So um, if it's Cooking Matters um, and their farmers markets tours, other nutrition education programs, we really want to provide Sort of a venue, an opportunity to highlight all of the different kinds of support programming that is available to direct market farming operations. So again, one more bridge to build to community and also the kind of programming that's really necessary to complement things like double up feedback. So it's, we, we realize being able to accept SNAP and providing incentive alone cannot necessarily build those community connections. But outreach and awareness and engagement and education are really just as critical to make this a very uh, high reach and comprehensive work. And then we'll have a third webinar where we look at across the board looking at incentives. So double up food bucks is one kind of incentive, but incentives in other retail settings such as grocery stores. And in that, so double up food bucks is a perfect example where it actually exists in farm stands, farmers markets, CSAs, food boxes, and small to large scalers. So we will provide a webinar that kind of looks across that spectrum and how these programs look different in different kinds of settings. We have not yet set dates for those, so pay attention. We will send out um, save the dates and registration similar to how we did for this one. So a question that came in is if we have any suggestions as to how to make sure farmers are keeping the double up bucks and snap purchases separate. So what happens if someone accepts double up for a non-eligible item? That's a great question. Yeah, like I'm going to come up with that, yeah. So the short answer is there's no perfect, perfect system for making sure that farmers are accepting the right currency for the right items, especially if there's a farmer who has eggs and produce. Um, when you sign up for double up food bus, we provide a training and an entire starter kit and in that kit, there is a um, non-Colorado produce vendor letter, a Colorado produce vendor letter, and then contract. And so the contract and the vendor education is really what's going to keep farmers from selling the wrong items for the double up food bus. Um, so with all of your produce, bar or produce vendors, explain the program, give all vendors those different letters, um, and make sure that they, you know, I like to give them a cheat sheet at farmer's markets with all the currencies, so that's a practice I highly encourage. And then they sign off that they really understand that those double up food bucks are for fresh fruits and vegetables, just making sure they know what the bucks look like. Um, and then it's just up to farmer's market managers to monitor what's happening. So we obviously know that you're, you know, um, manning the info booth for most of the market and you tend to do, but if you notice that there's a farmer taking the wrong currency in a market for the wrong item over and over and over again, um, my best advice there and what most people do nationally is just don't reimburse farmers for double up food bucks. So if you have, say, a bread and meat farmer who continually takes double up food bucks, um, I would just do a three warning system 
and say, I'm sorry, you only sell meat and bread. Here's the letter. Here's the program. You can still take SNAP bus for all eligible food items. Um, and just, you know, don't reimburse them if they've done it three plus times. Um, at that point, they should know. So it sounds harsh, but once someone doesn't get paid for an item they sell with double of food bus, they usually don't, don't do it again. All right, so unless there are any additional questions, we will just wrap up and sign off. Um, so I just want to say again, we will send out a link to this webinar. We will also send out that list of required documentation to become SNAP authorized, and we will also send out this actual PowerPoint. So if you don't want to watch the whole webinar again, but just skip to sort of the FAQs at the end, you can do that because we'll send out the PowerPoint. So with that, I really want to thank Lauren and Zora and Amy and Martha, who could not be with us today, but the Colorado Farmers Market Association. Thank you all for being incredible partners. I think we have a really robust program because of these partners in Colorado, and we are growing these kind of food assistance programs by leaps and bounds all across the state and getting national attention for it because we have such strong public-private partnerships across the state. So many thanks to you all. You know how to reach us. Thank you for joining us. And until the next webinar. Have a good afternoon.